hi and welcome back let's look at arrays in this video and in a few coming videos as well so arrays is one of those things that is just important in programming at some point you're going to come across arrays either you'll need to store something as arrays or there are things which will be in arrays and you'll need to access them an array is like a container and it's also a reference of a memory location and in this memory location it stores a specific number of elements and these elements will be of a certain type of course that is not true for something like javascript whereby the language in general is not typed it's an untyped language so that can be true to some extent but not entirely so an array has a length so like uh, in this case we have six items the total number of items here is is one one two three four five six the total number is six and we have indexes going up to five so that means that an array is a zero based index so by being zero based that means that it starts counting from zero so if i want to access the student tom i will use the name of the array student student and the index which is zero so an array is a zero based index so before i go on let me just go through the actual definitions of an array in different programming languages in the documentation of different programming languages so if i come back to the browser and i will start with java and if you go to the oracle page java documentation for arrays it says an array is a container object that holds a fixed number of values of a single type so in java this is true a single type because java is a strongly typed language so it will only hold objects of a single type if you declare an array to be of integers it will only hold integers you will not have any strings in that array so let's go to c++ this is my favorite definition and it says an array is a series of elements of the same type placed in contiguous memory locations that can be individually referenced by adding an index to a unique identifier so the identifier is the name of the array so if the name of this array was foo this would be this foo would be the identifier and then the index i showed you the index this one's so it starts from zero that's why it's a zero based index and then in in c++ you see they say it is contiguous that means they border each other they follow each other there won't be anything empty in here you won't find that you can skip this and move on to this so they are contiguous so they border each other in the memory they are next to one another that's what it means when they say it's contiguous in the memory locations they can be referenced using the index and the identifier so if i come to if i come to this for us we have an array of students so this is the identifier the identifier can be anything that you want it to be if it is an array of students you can call it student array if it is an array of of marks you can say marks array if it is an array of teachers you can say teachers array or just teachers you can give it the name that you want and if i come to javascript on mdn mozilla developer network they say an array is an ordered set of values that you refer to with a name and an index similarly the same thing the only difference here is that uh, we know that javascript is a loosely typed language and it is untyped so that means in an array in javascript you can store different let me find an example here you can store different things you see this one has a string this is a string and it also has some kind of a variable 
maybe this variable can be a number it can be a name and then you see this one also has a float number so it can have a float in javascript you see an array can contain elements of different data types which is not true of arrays in c plus plus and which is not true of arrays in java so another thing also to note arrays don't exist in python however python has lists and it also has tuples so even though even though python doesn't have arrays you learning arrays is important because you're going to face it in lots of different programming languages especially in the c family languages arrays are there so i will see you in the next video where we're going to continue from here and get ready for an example where we are going to do one example in java right here on id1 so in this video we have started looking at arrays and we have defined arrays based on this documentation definitions so i will see you in the next video where we are going to continue right from here